here in both government and industry are not just focused on today's technology. They're looking over the horizon, too. Abe Usher is co-founder and co-CEO of Black Cape. I asked him what those leaders should focus on for the short term and for the long term. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. So I think right now we're dealing with being overwhelmed by tremendous amounts of data. And one really important technology people are using is object detection. So as we have a lot of images uh, from space and aerial or on the ground of things on the earth, we don't have enough time to manually examine every image or every video. So deep learning uh, enabled object detection algorithms are allowing people at the scale of the data that's being collected to actually identify things in this information. So that's a really impactful technology. I believe a lot of people are doing some compelling work with that. Something that's coming down the pike in the next year is um, natural language processing in the form of so-called large language models. So this is a fundamentally new technology that allows people to interact directly with unstructured information to ask questions using uh, ordinary human language uh, as opposed to computer programming to derive insights from their unstructured data. What is the connection between deep learning and artificial intelligence? At this show I hear those terms together a lot, but I imagine they're not the same thing since there are two different terms for them. Yeah, certainly. Uh, artificial intelligence, or AI, is a superset of deep learning, and it's really any number of algorithms that give computers uh, a behavior that looks like a human intelligence that's trained through data. Deep learning is a specific type of artificial intelligence where we take a number of labeled examples of information and feed those to an algorithm that uh, optimizes a prediction based on the example information that we've provided. Mm -hmm. What is that, the implication of that for the people in this field, mapping and data tracking and so on? Sure. Um, deep learning is really impactful as uh, there's kind of, I would say, two major threads of deep learning people are interested in. One is how do we perceive our environment? Uh, and in the defense mapping arena, a lot of that relates to remote sensing data that's collected from space or uh, airborne platforms that capture overhead photos. And uh, deep learning can simplify our understanding of the environment by detecting objects and photos. Um, sorry, what was the second part of your question? Well, what I'm, what I'm wondering is where this goes in the future because it strikes me, you talked about the data uh, deluge that these organizations are dealing with and that's another theme of this show. Are we getting to a point where the algorithms and the technology and so on will help these practitioners get ahead of the curve or are they still basically kind of playing catch up? Yeah, we're definitely in a point right now where uh, deep learning and associated technologies are giving people a leap ahead in the ability to analyze the data they have. However, um, to truly use data as a strategic resource, I think people need to um, pause for a moment on the buzzwords and consider artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. These are all forms of making data a strategic resource. Mm -hmm. And one great metaphor, I think, for understanding how we create value with data is uh, similar to how we cook things in a kitchen. So cooking is inherently a value creation process where in a kitchen, which is an environment where we do things, we take raw ingredients, um, use some utensils to prepare them, and uh, according to a recipe, which is just a set of steps, we create something new out of that. So we can take raw potatoes, peel them, uh, cook them, and make french fries. So the analog related to machine learning uh, and deep learning is organizations need to have a strategic plan where they create a compute environment, that's the kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, identify the ingredients they're gonna work with, that's their data holdings, um, identify the appropriate utensils for maximizing the value of their data, and then uh, create repeatable methodologies. These are recipes with uh, their analysts or chefs mm -hmm. in their environment. Now, I just have a, about 30 seconds left. Will it work the same way as your analogy for the long term? Can these practitioners make up a bunch of different recipes, use them in different ways to create different outcomes? Absolutely. So I think people that want to create value with machine learning, if they're just getting started, the first thing they should do is collect and organize structured data and create samples of questions they want to answer and what are those answers. Abe, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.